so we are re-recording this commentary because I'm an idiot. Okay, I did not realize that OBS was taking my native resolution of 1440p and then exporting the file at 1080p. So all of the rolling in the background that we screen recorded was completely cut out and there was whole minutes at a time where I am explaining things that are going on and you can literally not see what is going on. And that is unacceptable. <laughs> So we're gonna fix that today. On, on the good news, we looked through the other files that we recorded at the same time, and for the most part, they are okay. So I don't have to re-record six of them today, because fuck me, that would have sucked. But alright. So today, we have Apollo is Carrie, okay, and he is going to be the one on the right here, okay? And this is a good match, okay? So I, this isn't my first time watching it now, obviously. So I'm gonna try to do a good job of uh, pointing out the same things that I noticed last time. Okay, and then I'll actually probably link to the old video, so if you want to go through and see my original commentary, it'll be there. Now, first off, just like every other video I do, okay, I, th I have a huge problem with people that are just standing straight up at the start of the match, okay? There's just no reason for your stance to be up like that. Even if you know you want to play judo, okay, you know you want to go for foot trips and you know you want to go for throws, standing straight up is not going to be the best way to connect to somebody. Okay, it's going to be the one that leaves you the most exposed to getting blast doubled. And if you are just standing up that tall uh, and then you start to reach like Apollo did. Okay, Bird just called me down to tell me I'm an idiot. I was saying Apollo and I really was supposed to be saying Soul of Nomad because I got confused because we had to remake the video because I'm also a double idiot. Okay, so uh, I apologize. I'm not great with names and the uh, whole having to re-record this threw me off. God damn it. I'm trying to do better, guy. We're trying. <laughs> There's a really good chance the guy's just going to blast double you. That's something I look for and something I practice as a hair trigger. You are going to go forward the second they do anything to expose an elbow or expose a leg and because his, his stance was that high. The odds of him giving up something bad right away are extremely good. Okay. Um, the other guy did pull guard and it doesn't look like Apollo really uh, reacted to the guard pull fast enough. Okay. So like, as soon as this guy pulled guard and started going De La Hiva, the very first thing I'm doing is automatically pushing the De La Hiva hook down. Okay, and especially with Nogi, um, the other guy going De La Hiva is extremely risky. He's do he does the right thing in that he has to invert literally right fucking now. Because if he doesn't, he's going to get knee sliced into fucking oblivion. But, um, Apollo doesn't really react appropriately here. Okay, I would have liked to see him take this hand off the shoulder instead, or maybe even take this other hand and then pull this grip off his thigh. Because the Nogi Barambola does work, but the problem is it's really difficult to do. And the way I do it is essentially the way this guy's doing it, where I grab the top of your thigh and I use that to turn your hips out as I invert, and that'll help pull you to the mat so then I can start to roll underneath you and actually go crab rides and chase your back. If you take that hand off, there's just going to be so much space. Now, right about here, Apollo should really be just getting his hips back and trying to get away. Okay, he's doing a good job here, so I'm worried right now the other guy will come on top. Okay, you can see Apollo but too much full defense mode, okay, without keeping the bigger picture in mind, which is, uh, you know, it's a Nogi Barambolo. He doesn't have anything to pull himself up right now. If Apollo just backs up and runs away even, okay, he's not going to give up two points, and that's absolutely crucial that we don't give up three points in a tournament match. Um, yep, the other guy gets up. Okay, so that was just a case of... Poor defense and poor reaction and really good play in the other guy's part leading to a sweep. So right away, um, I think the inversion right there was kind of risky. Okay, if uh, if someone inverts on me with that much space and I get control of his foot like that, the first thing I'm going to do is start dragging it down. Okay, and stepping cross or stepping into the inside right here. Okay, and then I'm either going to start threatening lay drags. Okay, or uh, because the guy's probably gonna start opening back up again, I'll end up just going through his hips, okay? So the, the fact that his legs were that open and that loose really did lead to openings the other guy just couldn't capitalize on. And you can see when Apollo did a full roll through, there was actually a moment there where his hips were collapsed completely. And if the guy on top had came in for a leg weave or kept pressure on that leg, started walking around, he would have been in trouble. Okay, the other guy looks a little bit uncomfortable with his guard passing though. That was a good job uh, attaching to that leg and that was a good inversion. Okay, I really like how high he got on the hip there. Um, for a lot of people that aren't really familiar with the leg lock systems, almost nothing you do with your upper body is going to matter to the same extent that the stuff you do with your lower body does. If you can get a good clamp on the hip, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's just, an, it's just a matter of time, okay? But if you start focusing on your upper body, instead, the guys will just keep rolling away and they'll be able to alleviate a ton of the pressure. That is a very good uh, figure four lockup. And just to give you guys an idea of why I have to redo this commentary, 
this whole thing where they were like up in the corner of the screen was completely fucking gone on the, the commentary video when Bird put it together. And Bird just thought that the video that, that got sent in looked like that. Okay, so uh, it did have to be redone. This is a super finishable leg lock though. Okay, um, he's got it pulled to the inside too, which is, which is really, really strong. It's actually a much stronger finish than outside heel hooks. There we go. Looking tight. Um, something I do think Apollo should be doing with his legs that he's not necessarily doing is instead of bringing this this knee across to the hip here, he should be like opening it up into the hip that he has isolated. Because the more he isolates the leg, the, the better. And there's really nothing preventing Apollo from kind of just going double trouble and reaching through and dragging the other leg all the way across and then giving the guy no real option to defend it. But that clamp actually does look really tight. Um, I don't necessarily agree with spending a ton of time hand fighting the guy there because again I don't think it's necessary. I think Apollo could uh, open his leg up a little bit, really kind of invert on this and then make space for his right elbow and he can immediately start attacking a heel in a way that it would be very difficult with the clamp Apollo has for the other guy to defend it. Okay, I wouldn't really go back to the other side. Um, I think that was a tactical error that didn't need to happen. He had that side how he wanted it. And again, there's, there's just a lot of ways you can start to isolate that leg. It doesn't matter that the guy is triangling his legs like that. That is just a short-term Hail Mary defense. It's not going to actually prevent the heel hook or straight ankle lock from coming in. So in this situation, I think you need to get a little more comfortable learning about the upper body stuff that needs to happen in order to finish some of these leg locks. So just small things. For the most part, your, I mean, your entry was really clean. I really, uh, I, I can see that you do know what you're doing, but there's a lot of places where we could smooth stuff out. Okay, ooh. So that was a pretty good, uh, that was a pretty good roll on the other guy's part. Okay, right there, you can see he's going to use that leg to kick him over a little bit, and he doesn't quite get as close as he needs to. Um, this guy should be, right now, bringing this foot in instead of coming up, and then if he stayed upside down, he could have stayed in the hips, and then Apollo would actually be getting his back chased. And I don't know if this guy would be good enough to get in Apollo's back, but it's something that could happen. And then right here, the guy on top, um, if this foot is, if this hand isn't blocking it, I can see that's Apollo's hand, uh, he should be taking this foot and just windshield wiper on top of Apollo's leg right here, and then he's on the outside of the hip. And then he could come around to the hip like this and start inverting, and he can start chasing the back, or get Apollo to kind of square up with him, and he can go through his hips and get the pass. So it's just, um, it's a dangerous situation for Apollo to be in, but again, I don't think the guy is going to be good enough to really pass that way, because a lot of the nogi passing margins are very, very small. Uh, that got fucking sketchy. Okay, this was, Apollo, you should have stayed upside down and not turned onto your side at all because you can see the guy's gonna he has an opportunity right here actually if he took his other arm through and hooked your arm he could kick into this arm bar right now and you could be in serious fucking trouble or you could grab that kimura grip and then use that kimura grip to pull you up and chase your back so uh definitely got to be cautious with how loose you are on your back that was a good attempt to come forward uh the guy got away but i think he did the right thing right there okay right there there was no reason not to just go all right when you grabbed his wrist and you got his head. Okay, this side is compromised. It doesn't matter if the guy is already on his leg like this in that combat stance. You should be able to pull him into you enough that you pull his weight off of this leg. So now when you start to lift with your right foot, and you can also take your left foot and kind of like chop out his shin a little bit just to give it kind of a block and make it harder from the post. Um, you should at least get him to lift his hips up, and that's when you can pull yourself under, and you can start going X guard, you can pull yourself under to a reap, or there's a good chance you'll just sweep him. Okay, so that was a that was a case of you got your grips exactly how you should in that situation. It was great, but then you didn't do anything with them, so it's like, why did we grab the grips to begin with? All right, you kind of went over for a drag there, and that didn't quite work, but so you still think you're going for the right stuff in those, that moment. Um, right now, I think you were a little bit exposed on this side, okay? Um, if he was good and good at windshield wipers, he could have started coming through and coming around. He doesn't want to attach to you too much because of your leg lock entries, though, so you've actually made him a little nervous, I think, with those entries. Um, he shouldn't be staying on his knees like this. He's actually just giving you a ton of opportunity to attach to him. And... It's good to keep your feet moving here, guys. If you don't keep your feet moving when you're on your back like this, I can come in and I can touch you and instantly spin you, even if it's just a half spin. And that's going to start creating openings that I can take advantage of. So he's doing a good job mechanically just spinning his legs. There we go. Um, that inversion again, those loose inversions like that, they can get you seriously punished by a good guard passer. Okay, there was an opportunity for the guy to just completely come in, okay? And he actually did come in a little bit. And now uh, you are in serious fucking trouble, my friend. Okay, because you can see you collapsed your own hips, right? Here you're okay. 
and then when you over circle this foot to try to react to what's going on over here he's able to actually do a nogi leg drag and you just kind of assume that this butterfly hook is going to prevent it from happening but again once your hip collapses like that and he's able to get some kind of forward on top uh, pressure on your, your thigh and control your hips it's just kind of a matter of him out windshield wiping you at that point you don't have a lot of reactive options okay so that again is just kind of being punished for having loose frames now um what's happening right now shouldn't be happening Okay, on either part. You shouldn't have collapsed your frames, and this guy should not have backed up to try to walk around. He should have kept in how he was and started going over the top, or done a more careful windshield wiper around the top. He could have uh, really replaced his grips that he had on your, on your thigh with a body lock even, and then you would have been in complete shit. Uh, but the fact that he gave you this kind of looseness is good because uh, you'll actually be able to retract this knee. It's very hard for people to keep pressure on that. That grip on the head is actually something I talk about all the time in that that's one of my triggers to go in these positions. So you're actually giving up the outside of your body when you're reaching up like that, especially when you start to get in your elbow like this. So right there, this is just not good. Okay, you can see as soon as you actually sat up like that, your leg became completely compromised. You can no longer retract it in an angle that was preventing the guard pass, and he's able to just waltz himself around your hips. This actually should be pretty close to the end of the match, okay? Because this guy can come around right now, and he can take his arm and start to hook your wrist right here. And if he hooks that wrist at all, there's just very little chance you're going to actually get away. He can keep that wrist ride all the way till he gets on your back, and then if someone gets on your back, you should just lose right now. Okay, the guy didn't actually keep circling and take advantage of it. I don't think he trusted his body lock pressure. But he did start coming back in for a, a mistake, actually. He came in for a hand weave when he should have came in for a leg weave. And because he came in with a hand weave instead, you were able to do the right thing and open your knee line back up before you got enough pressure to pin it. So you're actually, for the most part, safe. But you did need to get him off your uh, your wrist there, okay? And it looks like you over-circled your leg, and that lets him throw it by. And that's where things get kind of sketchy, okay? It's just something that shouldn't have happened. Because right at the very start, you know, we should have, shouldn't have been giving up that outside hip exposure. Now, that guy could have ended the match again, and he just didn't realize it. Right here, okay, you getting up on your elbow like this is, it's, uh, it's doing a technique at the wrong time, okay? The whole turn into a turtle and roll through thing needs to happen significantly earlier than most people think. Because once he's down chest to body and you try to do that, he's riding you. Like he's riding you all the way home. You know, he's taking your girlfriend with him. He's just going to get on your back if you turn away when they're that close. So these kind of turnaways need to happen when you know the guy's gotten past your legs before they've actually came down. Otherwise, um, you are just risking that back chase, and that's not something I really agree with because good, high-level people don't fucking lose back chases. And then if they get on your back, you shouldn't get away. So it should just be a match-ending decision when you turn away here. And also, this guy could take this hand and come through and hook the wrist again because you got up on your elbow like that. And that's another one of those cases where you should die. But luckily he went for your head instead. And this actually gave you an opportunity where you really could have actually turned into a turtle again and then sat through and then turned into started shrimping out. Never go into a turtle and pause. It's always um, turn away, front roll, sit through. Turn away, front roll, sit through. Okay, there's gotta be constant motion. And uh, this is what I said in the other commentary, and I think it's worth repeating, okay? You're settling right now into this side control, okay? And this is not the fucking time to settle. I always kind of ask myself, what would a honey badger do in this situation if he had just gotten dosed with fucking methamphetamines? Well, he's going to do honey badger shit, and he's going to go fucking nuts. And that's what you should do when people are coming down into side control and coming down into mount, okay? Because I always refer to it as... Uh, like you have this big thousand pound block of ice that's starting to freeze, okay? And when the ice is unfrozen still and you get that little layer of water underneath it, you can push that thousand pound block of ice. It's not gonna be easy, but you can move it. Once you let it freeze, okay, you're gonna have to break that ice loose. So letting the guy solidify side control by just chilling out for a second because everyone teaches you in jiu-jitsu to calm down in these positions, okay? That is just gonna make it harder to get away in the long run because it's going to take a significant energy expenditure on your part in order to break him loose again and even get back in the match. The way I talk about this is that you have lost the right to conserve energy and still win the match when you give up side control mount in the back. Okay, I don't, I don't think you should be reaching up and uh, grabbing him really. I can see you've got this hook there, but you should be using it to pressure and go. Like you're, 
your feet are not doing what they're supposed to be doing right now. There needs to be more pressure retraction here, okay, to prevent yourself from getting mounted. And then you need to actually be on your toes and your left foot. All of the hip movement you're gonna be doing is gonna come from that left side, but it's you're gonna get more hip movement and more pressure at, off of being on your toes. So you're just not giving him reactive pressure, okay, and I think it's gonna lead to something bad, like him mounting you. Okay, right now, you, know, you probably don't want both your feet in the ground like this, okay? Uh, both your feet in the ground means he just gets to go slide up the knee and belly for free, and because your knees are together, um, I would be able to just slap them across instantly and mount you right now, um, depending on what your arms are doing in the way. I can't really see where they are, but I think they're not in the way anymore. Good, get some momentum going, get some movement. Keep the movement going, keep the movement in. Oh, that got sketchy, that got sketchy. Okay, so good and bad. Good, you actually got back to a guard and you you were close to fucking getting him a leg lock. Okay, here, because you would have been able to come over and you would have been able to lace through the leg on either side. Bad, because the guy realized he had lost the position and fucked up and he actually did the right thing, which was just bail in the position and come in and try to repass. Um, great, because you followed him up into a single leg, okay? And bad uh, because we went back down onto our back. <laughs> All right, um, you went down into your back again, which is fine because he bumped you. Um, if you had fought a little harder here, okay, instead of hooking that leg, you could have kept backing yourself up and turning, okay. Um, not great too because you don't even have a shin hook, so it's gonna be really hard to follow this up. And if he underhooks you right here, you can see this underhook is open, your knee sliced already and it's game over because you don't get away from side control again on someone good. So what should be happening is you should have fought harder to stay up and get to your feet, okay? Or you should really be taking this knee even further through and using it to bump him up over your head and trying to close off your elbow line. That way we can turn back into him and try to wrestle up again um, off that momentum. Um, even that foot that came through the middle should have been turning and bumping, but it looks like we're just losing control now because we gave up his leg and that was risky on that underhook. Um, inverting here is a good idea though, as long as you have the flexibility to do it, but you're not actually fucking safe yet, okay? Again, anytime you're in a position like this, the guy on top, he should be able to win the windswiper battle as long as he's aware of what's going on. And everything's fine right now. You should be really attaching to him with these uh, these arm attachments you have. And then you can start thinking about doing the, like, the tornado sweep, okay? Because that actually does work. And if it doesn't work, it's gonna lead to attachment somewhere else, like attaching to his hip or attaching to his leg. But it takes effort and core. Okay, right here, this is bad. Um, this is you just get passing your own guard. Okay, the guy is on your shoulder here instead of on your leg like he should be. But if the guy switched all of his weight to his shoulder right now that's on top of this thigh, he would collapse your hips across and then he can start to walk himself up and he can go over the top and knee slice you or he can walk up and walk around. Okay, so this is actually a pass if the guy would have been aware of what was going on, but it does not look like he was. So right there, he's trying to just isolate one leg when really it should be the hips. Um, this guy shouldn't even be coming in with his chest anymore at this point. Okay, um, way out of bounds, so the ref is going to reset it, and that makes sense, okay? He's going to search you guys standing again, because there's just no way for the ref to recreate that position. That was way too, uh, it's like spur of the moment, there was too much going on, yeah, you're too close to getting a sweep on the guy, so the ref absolutely made the right call here. Good job on the ref. Um, I know nobody's happy about resetting positions like this, but it just had to happen. Okay, right there, what the, ah, the stand-up, guys, the stand-up can't happen like this. You can't stand up and reach with your lead arm okay this is like the the kind of wrestling that if you got to wrestle in middle school and high school you learn actually in like elementary school you know it's just your lead arm can't be the initial reaching arm and especially with your elbow out okay and um there's not really any reason to go for this tie up with the back arm either so this right now if you just look at the literal positions okay this guy's stance is really bad too so he can't shoot like he should be able to but if he had been ready to shoot this would be a takedown right now okay um that fake there, okay, you did a couple fakes and then you just posture all the way back up after. A fake should be like a, like a delayed shot, okay? It's like you get down to where you're gonna shoot and you give him the motions that you're about to shoot and then you just pause for half a second, okay? And the guy will follow you down and then he will realize you're not shooting and he will over posture back up most of the time. And that's when you shoot. So a, a, a good fake is like wrestling with 400 pain, okay? so. That's just a better way to do it because every time you try to go down and then you come back up, you have to go all the way back down to take advantage of the opening the fake would have made. So you're just giving him a lot of time to react. Okay, um, 
Ah, Del Polite, guys, don't shoot like this. This is like the cyborg shot. Okay, it's a. Uh, yeah, it's gonna work sometimes and you're 300 pounds and juiced out of your mind, but um, typically you can't just run at someone to tackle them, okay? You're gonna get sprawled into fucking oblivion because your upper body's gonna be so far in front of your hips. Like right here, okay? You see how right now his, his upper body is so, so far in front of his hips that because he just hinged completely here. If this guy just put any downward pressure right now, Apollo would completely go into the mat and then he could circle around behind him, get him in a front headlock. Uh, basically everything we don't ever want to happen in a match. If instead he had let his hips lead first, okay, and his hips were under him, then the attachments to the leg would matter and Apollo's even giving up an underhook here. Okay, so some, something you guys can do to practice getting better at wrestling is learn how to shoot with T-Rex arms. Okay, um, zero reaching whatsoever. You practice bringing uh, yourself to the opponent. Okay, so you keep your elbows connected, you shoot in, and then you don't get to move your arms at all. You just get to touch it when you're finally close enough to touch it. Okay, and if you're doing a shot correctly, your hips will be under you, and then you'll see what I mean. You don't have to reach in most of your shots. In a real shot, you will reach a little bit, which you'll do it a lot more careful with your hips alongside you. Okay, we did get sprawled. Um, right there, he should have stopped signed that. I uh, shouldn't have let the guy circle behind him. And going for the roll at this point with the guy already circled behind you gives him a good chance to get in your back. So I'm uh, dubious about that decision. Okay, um, now we're in a very, very bad position. So when I'm saying I want you guys to shoot more, I'm saying I want you to shoot more, but with good shots and good mechanics. So that stuff like this doesn't happen. But you have good leg lock entries, man. Like, now you're in that leg again, and... Ooh, so right there, this is what I mean. The upper body didn't matter because the legs aren't tight at all. Twisting on the knee like that doesn't matter because the guy's knee is going to rotate with the pressure and he's going to roll and he's going to be able to actually probably get out. If you had focused on your clamp with your legs way more and the guy couldn't move and rotate his knee, that pressure you're doing with the upper body would break his fucking leg off, okay? Um, and this is another reason why you don't get too sloppy on the heel hooks. He's going to get on your back right now. He could get on your back if he was paying attention um, and knows how, but I don't think he does. So in this position right now, uh, the guy, you, you essentially have a bottom saddle and the guy thinks he's leg weaving you, okay? This is uh, disputed about which one wins in this situation. I think you win in this situation right now because I think his foot's all the way through into the saddle instead of being behind the leg in a leg weave. And with that in mind, you should be able to offset that club on the head by coming underneath his shoulder, um, getting up onto your right shoulder and then rolling underneath him and that'll pull him over top of you and re-expose his legs. You probably even get him to go on his back. Um, and that pressure right there, it, it just shouldn't be enough, okay? The guy doesn't have a good underhook. The guy doesn't have a good club on the head. I would not be able to hold couch down in a position like this. He would be, he would invert me and start attacking on my legs. And that would just be no good for my poor fucking knees because couch is good at leg locks. Um, trying to power bomb up there is not bad, but you can see time's out. You were kind of looking at the clock like, uh, oh, fuck. So a lot of good and a lot of uh, things that we can work on. You know, the big ones are at the start. There's just no... Uh, no reason to try to stand up with someone if you know you're not going to take him down. Okay, um, this is just giving him the initiative in the match because he gets to choose when and how he's going to pull guard. And, like, I really think you guys either either stand and wrestle or don't stand at all. Don't stand and try to do foot sweeps and don't stand and try to do judo with people. Okay, because they just leave too many openings for quick and easy takedowns. Uh, and you guys need to go practice your shots until you can actually do them while your hips are underneath you. And that's going to be one of the big things that's going to prevent you from getting sprawled on, guillotined on. Uh, all of the shit that happens is usually because we're making mistakes somewhere. Okay. Off of his guard pole, we just really didn't react fast enough to this. We waited too long. You're actually flat-footed here. So it's not like you can adjust your angle. Uh, we didn't really peel the hand off her thigh. You could have stayed standing on that even, and you probably would have been able to get out of this. But the fact that you fell over completely flat on your back instead of on your hip where you're trying to scooch away is where you just kind of like put the nail in the coffin that he's going to be able to come up and at least get the sweep. Like right here, you just, that butterfly hook is actually probably going to prevent you from running. Yeah, you didn't really get an opportunity to stand up at that point, uh, like I thought you might have earlier. And it's just, we gotta react earlier to that, you know. Um, these inversions are clean, but they're also loose. And loose stuff like that will get punished by a high-level guard passer. And I know there's not a lot of them in Nogi, but they do exist. And these are just times that you would get past. Um, yeah, as far as your entry itself, you, you clearly know what's going on and you have good leg lock mechanics, okay? Um, but I do really think you need to work on your clamp with your legs, okay? You need to go and learn how to isolate the hip a little bit more, and then you can start to focus on how to actually finish with the upper body, because again, it just none of it matters. And uh, 
you know, something I would recommend is like studying up on the, either Gordon or Danaher's instructional for how to finish leg locks because you already have entries, okay? Or even, even uh, you know, Craig has a good instructional on it and Jacob Couch has a fantastic instructional on literally just how do I finish from this position? So that'd be a good one to check out. Even though I hate telling people I'll go buy something to learn, I'd prefer most material be free that I'm going to send you guys to, okay? Um, we had a lot of time where we should have been finishing this leg lock, so we were in there for a long time. Um, here, you know, like, we didn't even really need to be all the way on our back for the most part. I'd like to see you sit up and grab him and then pull him into something um, instead of just giving up the initiative. A little loose on your your flexibility and your ankles, okay? And this is what's letting him give, like, leg drags nogi and start to circle around behind you. Um, this kind of shit. This is the stuff where the match should have ended like three or four different times because every time you get up on your hand or get up on your elbow like that, if the guy can reach around your back, that's just the end of the match. But the guy stayed in your thigh instead of going to a body lock and you just have to be aware of how much you're exposing this side of your body when you do stuff like this too. You're giving up passes. And then uh, here, right there, when you try to switch your leg and like, kind of peel his head up, that's when you gave this up and you let him uh, start to roll behind you. And because you're thinking about your upper body now instead of your hips and the angles, he actually gets a throw by pass that he doesn't capitalize on perfectly, but it does get him to side control. And then again, guys, you know, if you fucking gave a honey badger some fucking methamphetamine, he's getting out of this position. So you need to channel that and use that in your matches, okay? But that doesn't mean make go so crazy you make openings. You have to go crazy in a controlled, spastic kind of way where you're not crossing your elbows, you're not leaving yourself exposed to mount chases and back chases and all that. So it's like you pra you actually do need to practice your honey badger mode from those positions and getting away. So that way you can do it hard and fast without uh, making sloppy mistakes. Um, a lot of these positions, you're just so comfortable inverting, which is great. It's a, it's going to carry you really, really far. But again, they're loose attachments. You need to be inverting and, and have uh, death clamps everywhere. And that's why Gordon Ryan and Couch are so effective, because they rely on isometric strength in these positions, which is um, extremely beneficial in high-level nogi. You know, like the second they clamp on something, it is, it's no longer yours. It's like now it's in a vice. Okay, so uh, just being a little more of a vice yourself and practicing that would really help you out with the leg long stuff and in general. And, you know, again, we really need to go back and work on our wrestling. Like, I can see you're putting your heels on the mat a ton even. And anytime your heel is on the mat is a time he could shoot from anywhere. He could shoot from across the other mat over here. And if your weight's on your heels, you won't be able to react to it in time. He's going to be able to take you down. Um, that shot, now that we get to freeze frame the mechanics a little bit, you're doing a good, uh, good initial step. But there was no real drive off your hips on the, this back leg, you know. This this started driving, I think, way, way too late. Right about now is when you should actually be switching to the drive on this leg and penetrating under and keeping your hips under you. So, um, I know it was a desperation shot because you were running out of time, but that was a shot you actually could have got. Like, the match was actually still winnable. Um, this leg lock, it would have been really nice for you to finish. Um, you needed to keep that momentum up and keep rolling underneath him at this point instead of letting him solidify. So, the a little bit of complacency going on. But this was a fun match to commentate for the second time, okay? There's a lot you can do better, but for the most part, like, your movements are great. Um, you just need to, like, refine and add some pressure to everything. And, uh, guys, if you're interested in me uh, commentating a match like this of yours, hopefully we get all the kinks ironed out because we keep making little mistakes on each video and either having to redo it or it just not being up to the production value that we want, okay? So you guys can join the Discord. I'll make sure there's a link in the description below to the Discord. And we have a couple channels for uh, sending in review requests, okay? The Patreons are going to get their stuff done first. They have their own little specific... Uh, channel on the discord itself okay and then uh when me and bird get around to free requests it'll just be when we have time but we would like to see them and people on the discord are already commenting on matches in the channel so you'll get some feedback regardless uh and then again guys remember the most important thing okay is to eat your fucking orange chicken if we had some orange chicken going on in this those grips would be vices already and this guy would have fucking died and it would have been an easy win so uh that's all good fucking day sirs and ma'ams bye have a great time Guys, if you want to learn more about the techniques that we actually use, we have a lot of instructionals on BJJFanatics.com. If you guys just have too much money and want to throw some away to some sketchy causes, feel free to check out our Patreon. And if you guys want to just see some random shit that I'm not posting on YouTube, small videos, pictures, whatever, you can check out our Instagram.